Well, good morning and welcome to our daily service. I'm going to begin by reading some words from the beginning of the book Romans. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the Son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received grace and apostleship, to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith, for his name's sake. Father God, we praise you for your son, as to his earthly life, a descendant of David, and appointed, declared, coronated your son in his resurrection from the dead. We praise you for the privilege of living for him and witnessing to him. Amen. That is a privilege because we love the Lord Jesus, but those of us that are followers of him also know something of erring and straying from his ways. And we're going to admit that and ask for the Lord's forgiveness in this confession. Let's pray together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things that we ought to have done, and we have done those things that we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a disciplined, righteous and godly life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Father God, we thank you that in Jesus' kingdom, the final word is grace and mercy. Thank you that with him there is forgiveness. Amen. We're continuing this week to look at the opening verses of the book of Acts and I'm going to read verses 6 to 8. Then they, the disciples, gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The disciples, they, they cluster round Jesus and they ask him, is this the moment, Jesus, when you come to your throne in Jerusalem that the Lord keeps his promises made to David long ago. It's been a descendant of David on the throne forever and ever and ever. Is this the moment that we reign with you from Jerusalem over the nations? And Jesus, perhaps he, he looks at them with just a half smile. You see, they've got the target right. They know where history is headed. It is headed to that day when Jesus rules over the nations forever visibly so. It is headed there and what a comfort in these times where the future feels so clouded to us, perhaps more so than it has for 80 years. What a comfort to know we know where history is headed. It is headed there. That is the target. Jesus, he looks at his followers and he knows they've got the target right, but they've got the timing wrong. It's not for you to know the times or seasons that my father has set, he says to them. They've got the timing wrong and they haven't realised the task either. And Jesus says to these followers, 12 of them clustered in a room, he says to them, look, look, this is the thing. You're going to be my witnesses, my heralds, heralding the fact there is now a king, a king of the world, appointed so in his resurrection. And you're going to herald this message in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And can you imagine Jesus' followers just 
not believing what they're hearing, looking at themselves and looking at one another and thinking, us? Us heralding this message? In Jerusalem, you were killed in Jerusalem a few days ago, Jesus. In Judea? Samaria? The ends of the earth? That must have been a very daunting task for friends who are thinking that perhaps their future was glory, sitting at Jesus' right hand as he reigned from Jerusalem. But Jesus, he gives them a wonderful promise. He says to them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will not do this task on your own. You will do it empowered by my Spirit. I, by my Spirit, will go with you and equip you comfort fears, give you words to speak in the most difficult of situations. You will be empowered. And what a wonderful thing to look back over 2,000 years of church history and to know that that has happened. The gospel message of a king has spread like a wave across the world through the nations, even to a little island known today as Great Britain or wherever you are watching this today. But still, according to the Joshua Project, perhaps 42% of the world's population unreached, no meaningful contact, no possibility of meaningful contact with a Christian of any sort. And those around us, who we know and love, who have shown no interest in Jesus really to us, or any inclination to get to know him better. So what a comfort to know that as Jesus continues to send out witnesses to him today, he gives us his spirit and he empowers us to speak. The target is the same. The timing we still don't know, but the task is wonderfully happening and will continue to happen empowered by God's spirit. Let's spend a few moments praying together. Father God, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians prays that God's people would be empowered to know the hope to which we have been called. And we pray that would be true of us. Please would we know where history is headed. Please would we know the future is secure. And please would your spirit empower us today in whatever context you have placed us, please would the Spirit of God empower us to speak, we pray, to witness to what Jesus has done in our lives, to witness to what Jesus has done in history, to witness to what wonderfully Jesus will one day do. In his name we pray. Amen. Father God, we pray for your witnesses across the world, those who Jesus has sent out by his Spirit to witness of him, those set aside to do so, sent from their own homes to different parts of the globe. Those just in normal life who are witnessing to their King and Saviour and friends. Please, in your kindness, would you empower your people, your witnesses, to speak hope to a world in desperate need of hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father God, we pray for world events, most obviously the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray that in your kindness, whether it be governmental regimes or the fervence or the disruption of the virus through treatments or even a vaccine, Father, we pray that in all things you might overrule that witnessing might be able to happen more and more. The future of the world until the Lord Jesus returns is the wave of the good news of the gospel spreading across it. And we pray, Father, that you would do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to join together by singing some wonderful words in the hymn, Go Forth and Tell.
Let's close our time together by telling out the greatness of the Lord, by saying together some words from Psalm 96. Psalm 96, together. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great day.